We are continuing on my short game. I don't want to say... E? Anyway, I've been playing a lot of short games that I find on Game Pass and recording some, some of them. I don't know how many I've actually posted. I think probably Death and Taxes, anyone who watched that video was like, what do you mean short? This was an almost two hour video, which is fair. Um, that's pretty short for me. I'm an RPG girly. And so usually I'm used to putting a hundred hours plus into a game. Since I haven't had as much time to play games as I would like, um, I've been playing some shorter things and then putting them on my YouTube channel. So here we are. So yeah, this is Norco. It's, I don't know, I didn't look into it, <laughs> but it seems to be like a point and click adventure game, maybe similar to like Disco Elysium. I don't know. Um, it looked cool. And so here we are. That's about it. That's all it takes for me. I am a judge a book by its cover kind of person. So let's go. Norco. Norco, Louisiana. I will move my... Yep, I was going to say I'll move my camera if I need to. Okay. Shield hid the stars behind halogen and flame projected onto the sky every night. There was no such thing as silence. The noise never went away. The refinery exhaled an endless sigh. I could never sleep, it was so loud. I could, still can't sleep without that sound. Ooh, that's, that hits, that hits close. Yeah, I still can't sleep without that sound. I-10, god damn it. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be awkward. Um, you often dream that the towers were cathedrals, that you that the swamps listened when you spoke. That the birds became radiant spheres while circling Norco's sky. You spent your adolescence sleepwalking between little devastating rituals. Though Blake pleaded, you decided to leave. I knew he'd get over it, or I didn't care. I think I knew he'd get over it. He never did. Oof. You caught out on a grainer to Chicago and onward to the West Coast, thinking you'd never return. You wandered through the overlit suburbs of the vast American limbo. Thumbing down 99, you saw an old man crouched in a roadside ditch. He was mouthing your name. He had a familiar gaze. He was gone when you wiped the sleep from your eyes. You spoke to Blake, learning of your mother's declining health, her insomnia, her erratic behavior. You ignored the urgency in your brother's voice. You headed east. You threw your phone into the Rio Grande and joined the armies of the Mesa. For months, you were in the company of fugitives, sleeping in nuclear tunnels, repairing engines and weaponry. The war was a meme that set Albuquerque on fire. You escaped while the foot soldiers of a pop-up junta bloodied the parched land. While hiding in a freight liner, I prayed, I slept, I forget. I forget. You called home from a landline in your motel somewhere beyond Texas. You knew from Blake's hello that your mother was already dead. You hung up, shouldered your bag, returned to the highway. Five years had passed. You made your way back home. Uh, I feel bad about this dialogue. I don't know where else to put me. Lowland ghosts. You awake from a delirious dream to find yourself in your childhood bedroom. Monkey watches you from the corner. Hi, monkey. All right. What is this? You. I'm- this is my- how I feel, I guess. With the- uh. Got it, okay. Living room, okay, let's see. Hi, monkey. Monkey, your best friend, a childhood gift. You spoke with him often when things got difficult, but then you left. He sat here for five years collecting dust. Five years. His eyes fill with anger as he challenges you to return his gaze. Oh, 
staring contest. Whiffs will appear and flash a pattern. Match the pattern to meet monkey's gaze. Oh, no. I'm bad at memory games. I mean, kind of have to be, I guess. Okay. The expression is unchanged. You stare more intensely. Circles will appear over monkey's eyes. An outer ring will shrink to the perimeter of the circle. Click the circle when the outer ring locks into place. Sure. Oops. Yeah. Anger melts from monkey's face. I'm gonna take him with me. You drape monkey over your shoulder. The laptop your brain gifted you idols on a shoddy par particle board desk. As the screen illuminates, you notice that the signal in the house is dead. No internet. It looks like Blake was using the computer at some point. He left a browser tab open. Why would I disregard? Oh god. Need cash fast? Install Quack Job. Use promo code BLEED3 for up to 0 .005 Quack Coin. LOL, so <laughs> the fuck kind of name is Quack Job. Just like the name sounds, full of lunatics, apps a way of getting you to join a cult, worse than the, them people living in the mall in Kenner. You can't trade that coin, they use on hardly any exchanges because everyone know it's a goddamn Ponzi scheme. Seen this exact thing, OP. Still there? Seen it at the base of the upper suction. Seen at the base? Oh. Looks like it was made of a glass, maybe. It would glow real bright and not at all move fast. Best pick I could get. All kinds of shit been happening out that way. Nothing like this, but birds... I mean, it's not at the top. Okay. Mobot archived all... Oh. I guess it's, it's supposed to go this way. Uh, but no. Um, get some sleep, OP. Yeah. Nothing like this, but birds in them swamps be catching weird... Acting weird. Funny. Talk to somebody else. Seen it too near the parish canal. What? It's just... Light through a tree? Call that the sun, OP. <laughs> Wanted to run something by you, Jens. I was knocking out Sackale. Sackale? Sackale? A lot? I don't know. In the spillway, saw a big round glowing thing in the sky. Call that the sun. <laughs> no place is a wasteland. Anybody still post here? Okay, I see, I see. Cool, cool, cool. Anything else I can. Cool. You assume Million has been ta keeping the plants alive. Among the books on the shelf is a slim volume called Crisis LARPing. The proto-disaster tourism began almost as soon as the floodwaters left. Punks went from across the country ventured into the Ninth Ward, Gent Gentilly, St. Bernard, and finally the East. They curated a theatrical self-portrait of their lives in the ruins. The aesthetics of disaster were central to that emerging milieu. It began to percolate into popular culture. Collapse became the zeitgeist. Wise investors recuperated the experience of disaster. New Orleans became a plastic dystopia, a marketplace for crisis. Okay. Looking down here. Oh. A sticker from grade school, half peeled from the window. Okay. A flyer from a show your friend put on a few weeks before you left town. A fight broke out while one of the opening bands played. I got whipped in the face with a bike chain. <laughs> you still have a scar above your left eye. After the show, you and Blake walked the river back to Norco. You watched the sun rise over the grain elevators. Okay, living room? A family photo album. Yellowing pages of disposable photographs. Your grandfather. A peculiar look on his face, impossible to read. Your mom, staring at Blake through the obscure lighting. He's dressed as a vampire, tugging at someone's waist, pleated khaki shorts. A photo labeled, Duck. Scene of a man- of a barbecue on the lakefront. The man at the center points playfully at the camera. His face is obscured. Turn the page and there's Blue, your father. Though you've never thought of him that way. An easy smile on his face. A canister of dip shoved into his front pocket. You set the book aside. Your mom's unfolded laundry. A letter from Shield Oil sits atop a stack of mail. 
Shield oil, community notice. Dear neighbor, please be advised. There will be elevated flaring at the site of our number five stack near Good Hope on the evening of Thursday, March 19th. This will pose no health risk to residents. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Shield Norco Office of Community Engagement. Memories of sleepless nights, your mom sitting here staring through the window. There was a tension in her demeanor, as if you were inter interrupting some urgent and obligatory task. You'd continue to the kitchen with no words exchanged. I thought she hated me. She was thinking about Blue. She barely knew you were there. What does this look like? Oh. Oof. It's a vague... No, no, no. You don't remember, Blue, only the things he left behind. Photographs, cologne, tools, the name that your mother kept. Even the pictures that have survived are too faded to make out. You. Are home again. Because your brother needs you, because your mom died. You. Were traveling. Down the Pacific coast. You were in California when the summer arrived. You recall the familiar smile on the face of the old man in the Central Valley Ditch. That smile burned its image into your mind. The freight cars, ra the freight cars ra rattled in the cold dusk as you crouched on the grain grainer porch. Suburbs, fences, traffic, black country, all passing for miles. Then what? You rode in the back of a van from Chicago to Des Moines. You stole a heater from Walmart and brought it to the poorly attended house show. Des Moines to Kansas City, Kansas City to De Denver. Your friends went south and you were glad to be alone. You spent long nights on those highways in a shitty sleeping bag. Oof, you. Your grandfather, Peter Pops Pierre Mel Melanchin, he passed away when you were a teenager. He seemed to court controversy, though as a child you never understood why. Your mom died. The cancer metastasized. It was in her liver, then her lungs, then it was in her brain. She was on chemo, never finished her third course. At the hospice on Jefferson Highway, Blake said the traffic shook the building. He left before she drew her last breath. Alone with the morphine drip and the rattling glass, that's how Catherine died. Yikes. Your brother is oblivious. Your grandma once said that she didn't expect much from Blake. She said he was short-tempered, oblivious, and couldn't focus. Blake was sitting in the chair across from her, staring down at a tablet. After she left the room, you asked him how he felt. I feel fine, he said. Why? Because of what Gran said, you responded. He looked confused. What'd she say? Younger, reckless, gets in trouble, spends sleepless nights scrolling, edgelord, sensitive, compassionate, foolish, can't take criticism, always needs money, tries to help those he loves but often makes things worse. Insecure, dysmorphic, constantly checking his reflection, always seeking validation was terrified of you leaving, and now he's terrified of you dying. When I think of him, I just feel guilt. No love or anything like it. An old friend of your mom's, your memory of him is scattered and vague. What was that, duck? The smile of the man who crouched in the ditch of the highway revisits your mind. His head was smudged with Wednesday ashes and a mascara ran from his eyes. All right. Can I, like, hug Monkey? Okay. Alright, I can't... Can't relive some religious trauma over there. Hello, folks. You peruse the titles on the bookshelf. The Western Margin of the Lake. Critiques of Deliberate Externality. Ben Celine Dia Diaspora. What's that? In the end, we decided to leave dimes. It wasn't the cat cracker or the smells or the feel fear for our children's health that drove us away, though they played a part. Truth be told, it was the media attention, the spokespeople, the and activists and academics and all this. I was done with it. I was done being a poster child, done being thought of as a victim. I wanted my experience to be my own, not something to gawk at or dissect in a laboratory. Many tragedies have come to pass along the western margin of Lake Pontchartrain or Pontchartrain, yeah. The un unnamed hurricane of 
YAW 9D left the settlements of Frenier and Labranche in a state of unrecognizable destruction. Those who survived did so by clinging for their lives to the limbs of cypress trees. The fables and secrets of those communities lie with the bones now scattered in the sediment of the lake. Shield has acquired much of Norco's most flood-resistant land through a variety of mechanisms. Madair and Moore, XY1Y, argue that one such mechanism is a process of deliberate externality. This theory posits that key corporate decision makers encourage the company to emit effluent and noxious substances into the environment with the explicit intention of decreasing neighboring property values. This compels residents to sell their properties below market value to relocate as quickly as possible. The criticism that this theory often receives is that it diminishes the importance of slavery in situating black reg residents along industrial fence lines, Jacob's YX 2D, up and down the Mississippi River. What the fuck? In the words of Carter, XY2B, slavery was the deliberate externality from which S.H.I.E.L.D. continues to profit. Pollution was never needed. Jesus. Okay. An old defective flat, flat screen your mom never bothered to bring to the curb. So why does it have a... Turn on the television. A chaotic distortion of your mother's memories flash before you. Okay. Oh god. Why would I see this on the TV? Okay, that's enough. Certainly enough of that. Let's go to the kitchen. Yikes. Your mom's painkillers are spilled across the counter. I don't want to go in the backyard yet. Is that the oh, microwave? We've discovered so many dead cockroaches in this microwave over the years that it's discouraged you from using it. For several months, a dead baby roach was stuck between the clock's display and the protective screen, blocking the hour. Blake finally shook the microwave aggressively enough that the roach fell into the guts of the machine. I also would not use it if there were cockroaches in it. Good call, me. Other me. You're always frightened by the laundry room. Why? Uh, but not the attic, surely. Boxes. There used to be much more clutter up here. You imagine your mom gave it away as the end approached. Because I can't, like, move around, right? Wouldn't that be funny if this whole time I could have moved around and didn't know it? Uh, hey, hey. A million. Pry bar. A steel pry bar lies on the ground. Okay, cool. Uh... Million sits in her characteristic slouch, lost in thought. I'm starting to think this is a more sci-fi game than I understood. <laughs> her car <laughs> car carapace has taken on the rusted and weather-worn quality of the rest of the machinery in the yard. You recall the night that your mom showed up with her. You and Blake stayed up past dawn, poring over pirated API docs. Oh god, I feel like I'm still at work now. Her ragdoll mass was slumped on the floor as you wrote the rooting procedure. You wonder if such memories hide behind her constellation of eyes. The robot regards you casually. Hey. Kay, you're awake. Couldn't sleep. Catherine used to say the sound of the refinery helped pacify you. Perhaps that is no longer true. In any case, I'm certain I was no help. She gestures toward the motorcycle at the edge of the carport. I was turning over the engine on that bike to test the coils. It was quite noisy, but they're in good shape now. All I need is a fuse, and we can get use get get can use it to get around while I finish repairing the truck. I heard the phone ringing inside, but I had my hands full. Where can we get a fuse? The gas station just up the road has them, but you may have to persuade Troy to let you in. Were you expecting a call? Many people have been calling since Catherine died. Your brother is usually the one to answer the phone, but I don't know where he went went off to. Likely at the bar or bookstore, if I had to guess. Why would so many people be calling? Her mother left behind a lot of loose ends. From what little I know, I gather she was conducting research for a client in Fat City. I sense that many people would like to acquire that data. 
I'm unaware of where she has hidden it. Perhaps Blake knows its whereabouts. Who exactly would want to see it? Your mother spent her entire life researching this town. She knew histories that others have forgotten. History has a lot of value in this place. It was the client. I haven't a clue. These aren't things she discussed with me. As the cancer spread, she became more guarded with her research. She always kept strange company. An occupational hazard, I suppose. So anyway, that's all. The truck was your This truck was your grandfather's. You remember riding in his lap while he let you steer. The dead wasps that collected behind the seat. Smell of grease, whiskey, and nicotine. You and Blake would drive the truck into New Orleans on the weekends. No AC, windows down, the rattling chassis was d deafening going on going 75 on Interstate 10. Million has been slowly repairing the vehicle since your mom's death. An old disused motorcycle with extensive rust and wear. I guess there's no oh. A disintegrating crab net. Lou taught your mom how to make these, and your mom taught you. In the summers, you'd bike to the suction before sunrise, tie chicken nets next to a net, submerge it, and nurse your coffee while waiting for a bite. So I can't go in the garage, shed, whatever. Okay. Did I look at this? Photo of your mom holding Blake as a baby on a beach in Pensacola, Florida. It's winter. You stand beside them, bundled up and laughing, as a gust of wind rakes the beach. The sky is bone white. Your mom fed the neighborhood strays. They must be hungry since she passed. Your grandfather's statue of the Virgin Mary sits in the shadows along the crawl space of the house. Ew. What? Ew. Observe the weathered concrete and flaking paint of the statue. The face is especially deteriorated, framed by a system of cracks. Run your hands along the deteriorating contours of the statue. Ah! <laughs> it snaps off as if by design. Behind the statue's face hides an odd assemblage of electronics carelessly soldered together. Sold yeah. At the center of the electronic configuration is what appears to be a card reader. Okay, so I can't do anything with the card reader? Weird. It's weird. I can just look at the house. Three times this house has flooded. The first flood is barely a memory. Placing your feet on drenched carpet, your mom and grandfather ripping out sheetrock. Sheetrock sitting in a small RV in the backyard set setting dolls on a cluttered table. Second flood, you were 14. The pumping station failed during a heavy rain. You were in class watching the clouds move upriver. You got a text message from your mom. Stay in Destrahan. I'll come get you. For two weeks, you shared a hotel room with your mom and Blake. She spent all her days gutting the house in the evenings you would sometimes help. The third flood, another pump failure. Your mom hired contractors with the insurance money. She said she was getting too old for it. You were bitter. You blamed her for not selling the house sooner. You stayed with friends in New Orleans. The fourth flood will follow a slow hurricane, and it will be a calamity. It will be. It will leave the entire region submerged as critical levees breach. There will be a massive blackout that last week. Much of the sewerage infrastructure will be damaged beyond repair. The, the embattled federal government will do nothing to assist. It will bankrupt the region. Small militant enclaves will form along the high ground of the Mississippi River. They will take to piracy and hijack commercial shipping vessels. Pirate, private mercenary forces will retaliate in kind. Slowly, the industry will flee this hot zone. The old river council structure will collapse from neglect and sabotage. The Mississippi River will again change its course. Norco, an old abandoned refinery town on a ghost of a river. Your house will be squatted and then raised. Yikes, okay. Anything I'm missing? Backyard is where Million is, right? Snowball stand is closed for the winter. The turtle, he crawled out the trash can. Don't touch him, see? He's dirty. No, he's not. Turtles are always clean. They live in water. Trash water is not clean. Let's go. Just let me stare a little longer. He's pretty. He's cute. 
The lights are on at Padu Private Investigators. You knock, no answer. Interesting. Okay, nothing else here. Tavern. Dimes discount added to the map. Oh, a film crew is set up along River Road. Several floodlights illuminate a gruesome murder scene. Two men stand pensively above a corpse. As you near the set, a small, energetic man jumps from his chair. Attention, dumbass! Can't you see we're trying to shoot here? What are you filming? It's a detective drama called None of Your Goddamn Business. Any other questions? Sounds cool. So is this like a murder scene? Keep it up and it's going to be. Hey! You know what? Wait a second. Wait a second. You from around here? Yeah. We could use some cultural expertise, you might say. We're filming a Bayou cop drama and all these knuckleheads are from L.A. An actor on set toward, turns toward the direction, towards the director. I told you, Kevin, I'm from Texas. Oh, that's right, Noah. I forgot your Harvard-educated daddy bought a boutique ranch outside Austin. Well, that doesn't make you a cowboy, Haas. So, no, Haas, no, sh hush up before you scare off the yokel. The director returns his attention to you with a mild look of disgust. Help us out, will you? The script needs some work. What do you say? Sure. Great. Hey, Noah, get over here so you can learn something from this stupid redneck. Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> the actor smolders. He whispers under his breath, I'm a redneck. Fine, Noah, you're a redneck. A real salt of the earth, earth kind of guy. But as luck would have it, we came across an even dumpier hayseed than you, okay? So just take a knee. All right, anyway, we need some good slang. What do you call a villain, a bad apple, a lowlife? I don't... Bad daddy? I was like, probably not, but <laughs> it's funny, though. Bad daddy, huh? You nod solemnly. It's pretty jive, pretty seedy. I can work with that. Great, that's settled. One more thing. It's a more regional way of saying to murder, to kill. Send him home with the rooster, slather him with the oyster. <laughs> No, it's so funny though, but send him home with the roosters. You maintain severe eye contact. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Sounds raw. Sounds real. Remember it, Noah. Home with the roosters. Well, I'm satisfied. The bad daddy. Send another poor bastard home with the roosters. Sends a shiver down my spine. I seriously have to repeat this? This is how real people speak, Noah. It's how people talk outside Silver Lake, you understand? Real people are out here saying weird gross shit all the time. So memorize that line because that line is going to win me a golden globe. Oh, the director half remembers your pre presence. I'm pretty good at sourcing talent, aren't I? Always had a knack for it. I guess I owe you one. If, you ever, if ever you need anything, talk to somebody else on set. Just don't bother me. I'm busy. Now get lost. So many evenings spent watching traffic pass by this gas station. Little has changed. The neighboring business still sits abandoned. The surrounding streets are quiet and empty. Well, well, well. Look who's b oh god. What happened? Carnival forget you beside the road? And you even brought your little doll. That's cute. Wow, Troy, you look like shit. Not even gonna start with you. How come the rest of your family's so chill but you so uptight? Like you know anything about my family? <laughs> Ain't like Norco some big metropolis. I used to go out to La Branche with Catherine and Blake while you were busy. Uh, hell, what were you doing? Bleaching your hair or some shit? Now they got all these clowns like you saying Catherine dead? They wouldn't let her go that easy. You're telling me- trolling me about my dead mom? Trolling? He's so damn sensitive. Can't say nothing around you. Your mom was excavating all along the rim of the lake. She used to pay me to help from time to time, matter of fact. She needed somebody smart. Yeah, that sounds like you. Somebody vigilant. Okay, maybe. Somebody like me. Okay. Especially with shield snooping around. I seen some wild shit out in them swamps with Catherine. What kind of shit? I won't bother telling you about it. Might hurt your brain. And anyhow, this ain't story time. Not letting you in this gas station. Goddamn company that runs this dump did me dirty. They swapped me with an ATM machine. That's redundant. For speaking the truth. Ain't letting nobody through till I get an apology, very least. That sucks. 
Don't patronize me with your weak pity. If you really want to get through, go get me some of them pills your brother was selling. That might persuade me. What do you mean my brother was selling? I can fight him? Am I a good fighter, though? Because, like, I kind of want to for the principle of the matter. But I don't know if I can. I'm going to just leave for now. Yeah, shuffle off then. Betcher. Betcher. Oh. Oh, horse. Oh. A man sits on a pile of flotsam, his head buried in his canvas jacket against the sharp air. Stupid horse. The man's gaze stays fixed on the opposite bank of the river, never turning to you, nor the horse. Yeah? He spits on the dirt at his feet. You know what they all dump in the water? Hell of a- You know what all they dump in the water? Hell of a cocktail. He spits again, wiping a string of mucus on his sleeve. What you out here for, anyhow? Ain't you heard they got a criminal on the loose? Bringing the law around here, making things harder for the rest of us? Best be sharp, young one. A lone horse drinks from the stagnant water pulled along the riverbank. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good idea. A memorial languishes in the river mud. In the river mud, a two by four cross, plywood plaque, and cairns of pulverized concrete. Sprayed haphazardly onto the plywood is a remembrance. Here pass the brave freedom fighters of January XW11, whose cries of liberty echo through the generations. In much smaller lettering, a different hand scratched fake across the bottom of the plaque. Interesting. Okay. Oh. Oh. Million was a fugitive, once a fugitive, now just a relic. She spent hours in stasis beneath the house like any discarded thing would. Million, okay. More about my mom. Your mom was conducting research. But for who? For a client in Fat City. Your mom. Mom was conducting research for a client in Fat City. That's all you know. Troy knows your family. He was buying pills from Blake and occasionally helping your mom with her research. He says she was conducting research in the lake. Shield is an oil refinery. Shield Gulf South is a regional subsidiary of Transnational Oil Empire. It holds a large share of leases in the Gulf of Mexico and refines crude oil right here in Norco. The chemical annex sits on the other side of town from the refinery. It produces the feedstock for plastic consumer products. Shield owns half the town. Shield. I don't like it. Oh, now I have a backpack. Okay. Yeah, I got your fucking pills. Smart move. I'll let you cross the picket line this time, punk. <sighs> oh. Dusty bags of dog food line the shelf. Fuses hang on the shelf. Take one of those. Is there anything else? Protein bars, bubblegum, breath mints, taffy, etc. Disembodied illuminated head of the t kiosk levitates silently in the browser tab. I detect that you have merchant. Yeah, no, I know. Scan the fuse. Thank you for your purchase. Oh, is that it? Good evening, how may I help you? You own this place? I'm Discountware, a distributed cloud-based operating system for American Discount Southeast Incorporated. Semantic version number 16.3.3. .3. The owner of this franchise is Paralu and Sons LLC. Discountware is licensed to Paralu and Sons LLC via the standard American Discount Southeast Incorporated licensing agreement. Uh, how do you like it? 
I proudly perform the routine maintenance operations and procedures of 227 American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise, lo franchise locations across the Southeast region. American Discount Southeast Incorporated is a model company awarded for excellence in business and community service. Thank you for inquiring about American Discount Southeast Incorporated. You know Troy, that guy outside? Thank you for your inquiry. I'm forwarding it to Paralu and Sons LLC. Paralu and Sons LLC has declined to respond to your inquiry. So why'd Troy get fired? American Discount Southeast Incorporated prides itself on its outstanding mentor mentorship and jobs training program. American Discount Southeast Incorporated works to ensure that each franchise location provides opportunities for career growth. At American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise locations, we leverage automation and machine learning technologies to enhance the lives of all employees. To apply for a position at any American Discount Southeast Incorporated franchise location, please visit American Discount SE ADSE today. Okay, cool, thanks. That was helpful. You got the fuse? Good. We'll be able to use the bike to get around town until I'm done with the truck. It concerns me that Blake still hasn't returned. He's been spending a lot of his time at Sarpy Paperbacks lately. Perhaps we should look for him there. Let's go. That's pretty cool. This, the sky bleeds a color you knew as a child. Airline highway passes beneath your feet. Million has joined your party. Interact with party members by clicking their portraits in the party mem menu. If you're stuck, they may be able to help. Million shouts over the wind. The bike runs much better now. You can use it to get around during your visit. How's Blake been? The year that you left, Blake became uncontrollable. His behavior troubled Catherine deeply, who was beginning to remind her of your grandfather. After he was expelled from Destrahan, he began running drugs into the parish. He made himself many enemies. He put those things behind him after her illness, but now that she's gone, I'm uncertain what to expect. This place can ruin people. I won't apologize for leaving. No one is asking you to, okay? Where could Blake be? He spends much of his time at Sarpy Paperbacks. Perhaps we should check there. How have you been? I am always the same, Kay. Always the same. Is that bad or good? Whichever you prefer. Fair enough. What's it been like around town? Shield has been expanding since you left. Catherine took your grandfather's boat into the lake to investigate reports of construction in the swamps along the shoreline. She assumed it to be unpermitted shield activity. She was unable to find any evidence of it. However, it was clear that she found something during that investigation. What was it? I don't know. Perhaps you do? I haven't spoken to her in years. How would I know? Has Blake not mentioned anything? No. In any event, something drew her to the lake in the months before her death. Okay. No. Your mom... Conducting research in the lake. She was investigating reports of unpermitted shield construction in the lake. While there, she saw something, but what? Mom was investigating reports of construction in the lake. She found no evidence of it. No. Mom saw something in the lake. Hmm. How do we... Oh. I see. Okay. A young man leans against his station wagon while scrolling idly on his phone, his silhouette darkened by the fluorescent glare of the payday lender sign. I started doing this rideshare thing a few weeks ago. Kind of hate it. Sucks. Yeah, sucks. Two teens nod and gesture excitedly while bouncing between topics. Where this dog came from, bruh. <laughs> Dunno, she been sitting here a while. You seen her eyes? Them eyes are something, bruh. 
stocky pit bull with piercing green eyes watches the horizon with a neutral demeanor. As you reach down to pet the dog, she shows her teeth and growls softly. That's fair. Okay, let's flip up a small. Your mom used to come here to dig through the stacks. Among the heaps of used romance no novels and westerns, she always managed to find some occult artifact. The owner is also the landlord. You imagine that's the only way he manages to keep a place like this running. Over the years, they've experimented with other revenue-generating schemes. For a while, you could get your phone repaired here. Then they tried selling vape cartridges. Then Kratom. Then anime wall scrolls. LSU yard ornaments after that. You remember seeing online that they were trying to do some kind of acupuncture thing. In the end, the scheme always f schemes always fail, and only the paperbacks remain. You wonder how anyone can read in this dim and cluttered bookshop. As your eyes adjust, you see Blake's childhood friend Erica waiting behind the counter to greet you. Kay? And Million, when did you get back into town? Hmm, I've been in Norco for quite some time. Perhaps you're misremembering, Erica. Weird, I guess so. But anyhow, Kay, you're looking rugged these days, old friend. Thank you. That's an intense scar above your eye. Yeah, I'm a bad <laughs> You know what, I agree. Heard you ran into Troy. How did you word travel fast? I guess. That guy, my god, he's such a clown. I was keeping up with your travels online, but haven't seen you post in a while. Yeah, uh, haven't been online much. Been avoiding my phone as well. Helps that the connection has been so erratic. Been hearing of people chopping down cell towers, tearing fiber, fiber cables out the ground, trying to rip the internet apart. She nods to the ensuing, into the ensuing silence. Back because of your mom, huh? Sort of. I know it wasn't always easy between you two. I was around for some of the arguments. Blake would say she was a great person, but a terrible mom. I just hope you and your brother can find some comfort. That means a lot, thank you. Of course, I lost my dad a while back, also to cancer. He was a mean bastard, picked up my sister and threw her one time, ended up giving her a concussion. I couldn't wait for him to die, and when he did, I danced, but as the years pass, I find myself thinking about him more. It feels good to hear stories about him. It's always complicated with this shit. Never easy. I worry about your brother. Your mom's illness was taking a toll on him. I watched him slip back into some bad behaviors. Have you seen him lately? Yeah, I saw him just yesterday. He hasn't been around the house? He has not. He said he was heading to Floodgate Tavern when I saw him. May have gotten wasted? I know Gus lets him sleep behind the bar a couple of times. Did he know you were coming, Kay? He never mentioned it. Figured he'd try to avoid me. Ah, uh, yeah, he can be like that sometimes. I've had to be delicate with him recently. If I ask how he's doing, he goes quiet. If I offer help, he doesn't return my text. He's, it's a front. He wants help. Sure, but I can only try so hard. Oof, do I know that. If I hear from him, I'll tell him to find you. Can I pet the cat? So this here is the illustrious Crouton. We found him be behind the dumpster out back licking cardboard. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't try to pet him. He's a devil. I've got star scars all over my hands from this damn cat. You know I'm going to try to pet the cat. Like, I heard you and I get it. But you know I'm going to try to pet the cat. Oh, wow. Crouton usually bites strangers. He must like you. <gasps> I love him. He seems to be getting a little excited. I don't know how, what that means. Never heard it, seen a cat purr this hard. Maybe you two should slow down. What happens? No, I don't. I'm, I feel uncomfortable now. Just wanted to pet him. What do we got? Was headed to Floodgate Tavern. He mentioned this to Erica when he dropped by Sarby Paperbacks to see her yesterday evening. Okay. But it's closed, but... She said that... I do hope Erica is correct and that Blake's absence is due to nothing more than another drunken night. My intuition leaves me with a sense that something is wrong. Do you feel it too, Kay? Does something feel strange to you? Yes, what's happened? Oh. What, uh... 
this is a mom memory. Am I just gonna get like these random visions from my mother and why? Hmm. Several weeks ago. Greater New Orleans Neural Versioning Clinic. What brings you here tonight? I want a record for my children. I don't want to leave my kids alone. They may still need me. I understand. And you were referred by Mr. Richard? Duck, that's what everyone calls him. Yes, Duck. We've followed his branch with some interest. Who hasn't? I gather we'll be discussing this in more detail as things progress. For now, let us begin with a simple exercise. I'd like to talk about your earliest memory. It's of pine trees, yes? Oh, is she like saving her consciousness? I just watched a video about this. Let's, we'll talk about that later, if that's what it is. That's right. Tell me about them. They grew from the concrete and cracked the driveway and the concrete broke into pieces. They made your father upset. He'd see them and frown, but he'd remain silent. He'd sit quietly in the truck, dissatisfied. I wouldn't say a word. The speaking in those moments made you a fool in his mind. Your father's house was suffocating. I couldn't wait to get out. And that's why you married Blue. Yes, to have somewhere to go. We bought our little place on Good Hope Street. The whole thing was a mistake. When I told him I didn't love him, I was my in my father's it was in my father's voice. I told him I never loved any man. Was it true? Yes. That was a difficult night for you. It didn't feel real. Where was Blue? He sat at the window all night. The east facing window? Yes. When you stood over him to apologize, when you saw you saw the flare stack of the refinery in his eyes. I never, oh, that's right. I don't. I don't know, we just save all of the memories. How was it after that, in the time before he died? We circled each other in wide orbits. I'd hide at the center of the house, nursing Kay, and only leave when I heard him step out. He'd sleep on the couch or next to her crib. He'd sing her old Cajun lullabies, pat her head, whisper to her about his life. And then there was the explosion. When the cat cracker blew, they say he fell five stories. We went to identify his body on a Thursday night. I remember the tempo of the streetlights, the police scattered across the East Bank. I carried Kay in a blanket. She never cried. Tell me about this man. I would see him from time to time around Norco. This was many years back. But several weeks ago, Blake saw someone passing by the house. I think it was him. Why? I just do. The robot is no longer there to deter him. Million? Yes. Could be it. What was your first encounter with Millian? Let me think. She came to me in the parking lot. Kay was about 12 years old at the time. She knew Blake from his days at the aluminum refi refinery. I stared for a long time into her constellation of eyes. They swirled in a kind of desperation. I took her home, knowing it was another mistake. You were reckless in those days. I welcomed any trouble I could find. What was the significance of this image to you? It's... Well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. It's a sphere. It followed me in the lake. When? Recently. A few weeks ago. This is where Mr. Richard's branch factors into your biography. Duck's version escaped. A hard fork, an extremely rare instance. And grew into some kind of monster. It began speaking to me through the radio. It told me to install an app. An app? Yes. I think it has something to do with the thing, the sphere, whatever it is. But so long as it pays, I don't care. I can use the money. The app pays? Yes. I see. It seems this is the last control point that you submitted. 
Would you like to include any additional thoughts or memories? Anything not included in the intake form? No, that should be enough. I will now begin disconnecting the sensors. A slight feeling of nausea and disorientation is normal and no cause for alarm. I thank you for your patience, Miss Madeira. This me. No idea what Super Duck wants from me. Better check my phone. Oh. It says here I need to go to the Curious Duck. Oh. Ma'am? I... Ma'am, are you okay? My eyes are just playing tricks on me, I guess. Vertigo and visual distortion are common side effects of a versioning session. Shall I contact your, our on-call physician? No, no, it's fine. Very well. Last name? It's Madeira. First name, Catherine. One moment. Your head drive is fully synced. You have chosen our silver tier. Your product does not come pre-installed with adware blocking services and is provided as is without warranty. You are eligible for a free sync any time before the new year. Thank you for choosing the Greater, Greater New Orleans Neural Versioning Clinic for your cognitive versioning needs. The uncanny smile of personal injury lawyer Martin Smart hangs above Interstate 10. His eternally qu quaffed hair clings desperately to his head. His hallmark blood red tie catches the eyes of drivers speeding east. Just a click away, the sign reads. The Interstate Expressway traces a scar down Claiborne Avenue from east to west. The bridge cuts east through the tre Treme and Seventh, Seventh Ward like places whose stories should be forgotten and left behind in haste. The pillars still tell those stories beneath the interstate. East above the Industrial Canal, the moldering st strip malls, the narrowed expanse of the lake, the shrimp boats that prowl the black marble waves. East through Mississippi and the winter weeknight darkness and onward to Florida where it terminates. West is the suburbs that Catherine calls home. West is the concrete expanse that breaks clean and sharp at the St. Charles Parish line and gives way to the cypress swamps. Tupelo crowns spire over the overpass, silhouetted by an unnatural glow that leads to Norco. All right. Wait, can I like walk on the over... Hello? This is taking forever to start. I'm starving. You been to any of these yet? No, what is it? Puppet show. They always start late. I told them I'd load the gear, so I'm stuck here till it's over. My stomach's going to eat itself. A newly refinished art deco structure glows behind, beyond the overpass. They turn charity hospital into art lofts. Disgusting. Anything else, though? A makeshift puppet theater. The curtains are closed. Maybe I'll come by later to see what this is about. Where do I? <laughs> I forgot where I need to go. Meet contact at Curious Duck. Oh. Santa? I guess this is Curious Duck. Oobles. How's your night, ma'am? Eh? Not great. Sorry to hear it. You wouldn't have any change to spare, would you? Sure. All I've got is a buck. Really appreciate that. Change has been hard to come by this evening. Didn't know we'd be co going head to head with sketchy Santa. His sign says he's raising money for veterans. Last night it was for leukemia. Night before that it was something else. I respect the grift, but he stole our corner. Tell him something. You should confront him. We did. He, uh... He tried to kill us. Yeah. Oh. With a knife. Wow. It was dull, so it just bruised a little. Well, that's... A little extreme. That's terrifying. Are you sure you're okay? Doesn't hurt as long as I'm drunk, so thanks for the dollar, lady. Yeah, thanks for the pain relief. You got it, dudes. Hot dog vendor sits behind the large a large plastic cart. He looks up eagerly as Catherine approaches. Oh hey, hi. He watches Catherine with a silent grin. So is this I'm flannelass, and these he makes a grand sweeping gesture above the pot of vague meat are my hot dogs. Would you like one? Sure, what the hell? 
from dying anyway. R really? You're buying a dog? That's fantastic. That's great. You seem a bit surprised. It's just been a while since I've gotten some business. Been a little slow. Haven't ordered new dogs in a while. Uh, so these are old dogs? Nothing to worry about. They keep well. How old? The business was popping like I was doing really well back in YX2D. YX2D? That's nearly a decade ago. How would you like yours dressed? Tell you what, think I'll pass. I'll be here all night. Anything else I can help you with? Nope. Certainly not. And that is why Marie Laveau opened a t-shirt and camera shop on Royal Street. That's not scary at all. I paid for a ghost tour. If we're just going to walk around looking at t-shirt shops, I want my damn money back. This is a farce. What kind of tour guide are you? Well, technically I'm not one, but excuse me? My roommate is. Then where is he? Long story. I came all this way because the website said it would be fun. I'm having an alright time. <laughs> This city was supposed to be enchanting. Anyone trying to score some molly? I hate New Orleans. Well, ho, ho, ho. Santa's eyes roll wildly in their deep sockets. His mouth twists into a smile. How are you, dear? Got a dollar to spare? Help spread some Christmas cheer? Gave my last dollar away. Just let go of my last dollar. What? The dollar was for me. Okay. There's a small plaque next to the door that says Curious Duck. This is the place. Door's locked. Curious Duck's door is locked. What's with the shop over here? I was told to come by, but the door's locked. The Curious Duck? Rosie doesn't let anyone in unless they know the secret knock. What's the secret knock? I can't say. Sorry. It's urgent. Please. Well, I do need some business. Alright, I'll buy one of these old hot dogs. You won't regret it. Doubtful. How much? Fourteen dollars? Is that a joke? Is what a joke? Christ, do you take wallet transfers? Cash only. Damn, well, what if I send some business your way? Then I'll show you the knock. Fine, it's a deal. Oh wait, so listen, that dollar I gave you, why don't you put it towards one of these delicious hot dogs that nice gentleman is selling? You're talking about this guy right here? Hi! No chance in hell I'm eating one of those things. No way, lady. Wait, but the overpass guy was hungry. This is taking forever to start. I'm starving. Do you consider yourself an adventurous eater? You like to live dangerously. There's a guy selling old hot dogs up the street. Sounds like a delicacy. Always looking for ways to fortify my intestines. The show's getting started. I'll grab one after it's done. A crowd has arrived to watch the show. Can I not tell them to? The show's getting started. I should take a seat. I want to see the puppet show. Oh, I don't like the eyes. So many eyes. Deep in this cypress hollow I hide, I mourn this evening my last child has died. They hang hooks from the trees with chicken thighs. They shoot bullets in our heads behind our eyes. It is a curse that I am the last to survive. I was once captured by a fisher fool who called me his own. He walked me like a dog along the sinking streets. He fed me strange plants and deli meats. He even covered me with blankets when I went to sleep. I left on the night of a monstrous flood. The fool has not rested a single night since. He stalks these bayous each night, hoping to see my eyes shine. He calls out a ridiculous name that was never mine. Tonight I will shine my eyes at him. I have a request. Kill the shrimp-catching man who killed my children. Remove his head, bring me his skull. Do this and you may again leash me like a dog. Did we just get... Brainwashed? I'm not entirely sure. Hello? Oh. Oh. Hello, Fisher Fool. You've trolled this bayou for many nights. Here I am, the one you're trying to find. My child hangs dead across the lake. Bring me the head of the shrimp-catching man, the one who captures the small ones. Peel the flesh from his skull. Do this, and I'll be your dog again. A solitary egret st stands in the rush, undisturbed by the boat's wake. Hmm. That's 
That's on me. I didn't realize, like, just... I was clicking before. I didn't realize just moving it. A hand-painting cross and votive candles hide in the rushes along the bank. A bone-white oak tree towers above the display with a plaque nailed to its trunk. It reads, Monster that took you. I prom promise I'll find. Your daddy, he love you. Rest easy, child. A small assortment of sentimental objects are piled at the foot of the cross. A journal, too waterlogged to read. A set of playing cards, small figurines, a cell phone case. You slide the case into your pocket. Oh, did that open the path from before? Been a long time I seen anyone down this bayou. They all too frightened anymore. Biggest alligator ever to hunt this lake. She makes her den just across the way. She took my child from me. I buried him when I, where I found him, near where she stay. I visit that site daily, hoping I might catch her, but she know better than to show her face. Were one to cut out that big skull of hers, that'd be something worth bragging on. It'd be a roadside marvel. There'd be money to make. I see that rifle you holding. What you say? Sorry. I got the skull. An alligator hangs dead from a meat hook fastened to the limb of the cypress, cypress tree. Weirdest puppet show I've ever been to. Three crows watch from a power line that runs along the bank. In fairness, I can't remember with any certainty if I've ever been to a puppet show, but I'm pretty sure this is not how they go. At least not on TV. Or in video games. Other video games, clearly. Yeah, that's on me. I got too eager because she's right here. You did my bidding, fisher fool, just like an obedient dog. Each day you held me captive, my patience drained. You'll not humiliate me again. Consider this your last mistake. Oh, now the no, oh, she's gonna kill me. I think I misunderstood something about that story, and it was the part where I was also a bad guy. I relished the horror that struck the Fisher fool's eyes. I first took one limb, but left him alive. I made him crawl like a dog before he died. Cool, 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 cool. It's pretty good. If I talk to... I don't think I can. Mas Man masquerading as a tour guide continues to lose control of the crowd. This city is just one big scam. Guy from the puppet show. Guess he followed my food recommendation. Hey, this is pretty tasty. Thanks for the wreck. I might get another one. Just wait for it, pal. Hope you know where to find a bathroom around here. Hi. Hi. Hey, thanks for sending some business my way. No problem, but we had a deal. Deal? You're supposed to show me the knock? Oh, well, sorry. Rosie would be upset. Are you kidding? I sent you business. Show me the knock. That was the deal. Well, okay, but only show you once. So here, listen. Yeah, it was just for... <laughs> Very secret. That's how everyone knocks. Exactly. Who would suspect it? Oh, boy. Yeah, crazy. Ah, <gasps> kitty. Oh, it's Crouton. This cat looks familiar. Don't touch. Oh, the ball. Oh. Suppose you think you can come in here with your soft little hands and touch on my magic ball? Don't work like that, love. No, I gotta clean off the smudges. I see you've been eating french fries. Greasy hands. Nasty. You must be one of them super duck people, always coming around here looking down at their cell phones. Greasy hands, terrible. The app said I should come here. The app. Yes, ma'am. Something not right about you. You a drug head? I'm sorry, is this the right place? It is. Just calm down, love. You made it. Dallas will tell you what he, what's what. Go talk to Dallas. I called him when I heard you trying to break into the place. Hell of a racket you were making. 
jiggling on the handle like you couldn't get a hold of it. Now I see why. Dallas will be out right out front. I don't got time to be babysitting you now that I got to clean up all this. Stains all over my ball. You even check your shoes before you came in? My shoes are clean. Well, no, I know that's a lie. And one last thing, that gemstone you got hang hanging from your neck, that thing ain't real. I know. Trashy. Damn. All right. Unopened merchandise boxes are pushed to every corner of the room. Mass-produced novelty voodoo dolls and tribal figurines clutter the display case. Novelty New Orleans-themed t-shirts lie in the back wall. Plastic simulacra of ceremonial masks hang on the wall. So a bunch of fake shit. An odd jumble of Mardi Gras beads and other trinkets spills from the table. So, like... All your shit is fake, but you're being rude to me. Go find Dallas. Let him deal with you. All right. You must be Dallas. Guessing you're Catherine. That's right. Rosie debriefed you. Was that a debriefing? I don't know if that's what I'd call it, but sure. She can be kind of... He casts his gaze into the sky and back to Catherine. Never mind. Quack job should have a ticket with the information we need. No reason to stand around. What's Super Duck? What exactly is Super Duck? It's a way of making money. Right, but... It's an intelligence of some kind. I don't know its purpose. Don't know why it exists. None of that. There are nodes all across the re region. Points where you can speak with Super Duck directly. These are all things Rosie should have told you. Not surprised she didn't. Tell me about her. What's Rosie got to do with any of this? There are a dozen or so rendezvous points in addition to the nodes. Rosie's shop is one of them. She must be making good money offering her place to the network. Probably the only reason she keeps it going. Doubt she's sold merchandise in years. Locks the doors to discourage customers. Guess you could call it a front. Have you been on Quack Job long? How long have you been on using this app? Been doing this, doing it this since before there was an app, but Super says use the app. I'll use the app. Makes no difference to me. Okay, let's go. I'm ready. Me too. Check the app and let's get moving. Curious Duck is in here. Okay. Receive orientation at Eagle Janitorial and Paper Supplies in Fat City. Why City Hall? A man holding a skateboard scrolls on his phone. A beautiful night, huh? It's lovely. It's finally a cool front. I've been waiting months for it. I came out, come out here most evenings. No one bothers you around this time. Plus, you see a different side of the place. What do you mean? How so? People pass through this building at night and you'd never expect, you know, the, what do they call themselves? The Greggs? Garys? Can't remember the name. No idea. The kids that squatted in Promenade Mall? Promenade? Promenade? Whatever. Mall? They're obsessed with Ken or John? Nope. Then it probably wouldn't mean much to you, but anyhow, I see him come in and out of City Hall almost every night. I know it's them because my buddy Bruce got wrapped up in that stuff. Before you get initiated, they make you wear these goofy red polo shirts. Then once you're a full Greg, Gary, whatever, you get to wear the blue polo shirt. Sounds like a joke, and it is, but I don't think they realize it. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff I see around here at night. Why? What would they be doing here? Wish I had a clue. An armed security guard greets Catherine as she enters the building. He sits on a wooden stool next to a walkthrough metal detector. Good evening. Badge, please. Damn, I left it at the house. There are no council meetings scheduled for this evening. You'll need an employee ID badge to enter. I hear strange people come through here at night. <laughs> Guy out front mentioned squatters in polo shirts coming in and out of the building at night. I don't get paid to answer questions. You know, that's fair. It's called Cart, Fat City. I forgot I got a new phone case. Eh. Alright. Anything to look at other than... The doors are locked. The office is closed. The galvanized steel door to the supply warehouse is half opened. I guess that's where we're going. As long as we can get away from this car alarm. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what? Don't like it. Nope, don't like it at all. Okay. 
Did I just witness that as K or I don't act two refinery eyes. Erica said Blake went to the floodgate tavern yesterday evening. Let's pass by on the way home and see what we, information we can gather. Do I have any more? No, so my mind map doesn't care about. Okay. So. Floodgate Tavern. Many shield... Okay, we already looked at that. Okay, it's open now. That's Private Detective Brett LeBlanc sitting at the end of the bar. He's an unpredictable character, but we may benefit from speaking to him. Why are you looking at me like that? I still got a chili on my face? Evening, folks. Can I get something started? Um, you know Blake Madare? Yeah, I know Blake. He hasn't come around in weeks. Not since he ripped me off. Wish I could say it was the first time. Fuck. Where is he? What did I just do? Oh. Uh, someone said Blake came by here last night. Nah, he'd be a fool to show up here after what he did. He ripped you off? Let him catch some sleep right here behind the bar after last call. And wouldn't you know, the boy walked off with the register. I knew he'd been getting himself all messed up on drugs. Was trying to give the kid a chance. Gave him some chores around the place. Done with him now. Done with him. Good for now, thanks. Who are you? Don't see how anyone can believe the crap the media has been putting out these days. It's all lies meant to divide working people. See for yourself. He got gestures to the TV. That why you making your website, Heath, to set the record straight? You know that's right. The LCD pulse of the evening news makes pale shadows across the bar. bar. <laughs> An image of a man with a long gray beard hangs over the news anchor's shoulders. Candle? Kind of looked like it. <laughs> Anchor pipe. Another pipeline explosion has left residents of Lower St. Charles Parish shaken. Shield officials have determined that the source of the explosion was due to a botched attempt by oil pirates to divert the flow of oil into a stolen barge. A man familiar to local law enforcement known only as Lucky uh -oh, was among the pirates, shield officials say. He is believed to be hiding in the Batur Woods along the east bank between Kenner and Laplace. Maybe it's the guy I, t I talked to before. Residents are asked to call Crime Stoppers with any information. Sit here long enough, you never know who might pass through. Hey Gus, look at this dynamic duo. Not sure I've seen these two around before today. Sure Gus, that filthy one right there, that's Kate Madare's oldest. Other one's her robot. You pulling my leg? That's Kay? Blue's baby? Come on now, I worked the turnarounds with Blue. Good man. Great man. Had some stories, him. How come this kid's ca his kids came out like they did? Look, ha look how this one's dressed. Looked to me like she headed to the job site. Or the circus. Blue passed before his time, is why them kids don't dress right. Blue knew how to dress. You right about that one, Keith. Sad the way kids turned out, but forget all that. I'm right here. <laughs> you two are lucky to be stumbling in while I'm sitting here. You're in the company of a top-rated professional sleuth, and I happen to have a bit of information. Spit it out then. Hey, listen, I do things on my own time, you understand? Whining ain't gonna make this go no quicker. What he means to say is he don't do nothing but sit around here and drink. My ass, I'm the hardest working flat foot you can find, me. LeBlanc, please, time is of the essence. Pull your heels, I'm getting to it. Now I see why Kate kicked you to the curb. That's, that is not correct. Save your battery life, I'm just playing with you. Tell you what, why don't you get me a drink so we can talk? I guess a beer for your boy. Lord help me, another sap buying that little life a drink. Might need you to buy me a little snack too, seeing as my wallet's all the way out in the car, but this is enough to get us going. It's alright, where do I even start? Your mom ever tell you about me? No. Nothing? I mean shit, she must have said something. Hard-nosed detective, charming and mysterious. Give it up, Brett. Alright, alright. Alright, alright, alright. I'm sure I came up. The problem is you got piss poor memory. Us investigators, we got we got to burp, keep our memories sharp. So while you don't know me, I know a lot about you. Grew up in this town, you understand. My cousin Susie's ex-husband knew your daddy when he was still at the plant. And Catherine, she was a few grades above me at Sacred Heart. I knew her since I was a boy. Everyone around here knew Catherine. She was always getting herself into trouble, always drawing attention to herself. People'd say she was kin to Jesus. Old man lived behind Lupe's would say that. Talking about Papa? Yeah, Papa. Been years since I thought about him. A lot you could say about Papa. 
He'd whisper some bullshit and get everyone repeating it. it wasn't all bullshit. It's what? You know that's bullshit. We all Christ children. Not like that, Gus. You know what I mean. Like, literally. Wait, what? This was years ago, long before Blue died. Papa told the priests a family of Cajuns came from Jesus. Said Catherine had, how you say it? Like, Jesus blood? Got it from her daddy's daddy and so on, all the way back to the old world. Like in that movie, one with the volleyball? That ain't the right movie, Gus. It's the one with the, the priests and stuff. Well, I don't know. I don't watch movies. Figure some of that's likely to be true. You'd believe any old shit, Keith. No disrespect. Catherine never noticed. She was off on her own planet, wild as she was. Papa never wanted to be seen. He was watching Catherine, but she weren't watching him. Blue wouldn't let no man like that near her anyhow. You had a point there, Keith. You'd be foolish to get in Catherine's way. Where she went, trouble followed. But I admired her, and she admired me. You sure about that? She never said much, but I could tell. Oh god, one of those. She only talked to you when she needed a free hand, Brett. Like hell, she burped, did all she could to get my attention. I just had too much respect for Blue. Couldn't dishonor the man's memory. Uh-huh. The bartender shakes his head. Sometimes you make me sad. Don't mind, Gus. I always been the handsome one, and he gets jealous. Made me forget what I wanted to tell you. Oh, that's right, your house is out there near the fence line. Well, that's right behind my place of business. I had a window, looks out on the yard, more or less. Oh yeah, that we walked by that, and it was locked. But this is a pretty long story, and like I was saying, ain't got my wallet with me. And you want us to buy you another drink? That's a real generous offer, robot. Thank you for that. Unbelievable. What's it gonna be this time, folks? LeBlanc wants another. Word of warning, he'll bleed you dry. This is the cheap stuff. I ain't complaining or nothing. Just making an observation. Tastes like dog piss. It's real important information I'm trying to share here. Valuable, you might say. And you buy me the cheapest beer in the house? A little rude, maybe, but that's okay. That ain't no problem. So listen here. This is what I wanted to tell you. My office window looks out on your mama's yard. I'm always keeping an eye on the street. This was a little ways back, right after Catherine passed. I was looking out there on the street like I do, and I seen the, these shield security types leaving the house. I was carrying a box. You saw shield security leaving Catherine's house with a box? That's what I'm saying, robot. They was walking out the front door with a box, casual as can be. And where the, he the hell they... And where the hell were you? Ain't you some kind of security robot yourself? What would S.H.I.E.L.D. be looking- wait. Yeah, why didn't you stop them? Well, because I was busy. With what? You know, just busy. Who cares with what? When are you ever busy with anything? All the time. I can hardly get a minute to relax. Then what were you doing? I told you I was looking out the window and then I saw them S.H.I.E.L.D. people. So answer the question, Brett. You see these people breaking into a home. You're always coming around here bragging about stopping the bad guys. If I wasn't so busy, I might have killed him. Sometimes I wonder if half the stories you tell. Ask around town. Everybody knows I'm a killer. Or just fantasies you make up to convince yourself. I was taking a shit. The detective smooths his tie as it, a moment of silence settles over the room. Windows next to the toilet. I'm always watching the street because I have an irritable bowel syndrome. I haven't, hadn't even started wiping when they, I seen them shield dudes. All right, bro? Would you run down Apple Street with poo all over your ass? That's a fair point. Man closes his eyes and shakes his head slowly. <laughs> I take that as a no. You wouldn't. Nobody would. You gotta have a clean ass to fight crime. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Had I been done wiping, I guarantee you they'd be dead right now. I'm serious. What would S.H.I.E.L.D. be looking for? Hell if I know. Laura St. Clair, the regional CEO they got over there, she always took a bit of interest in your mama. I hear she's a loose cannon. Why would she be interested in my mom? Everybody was. He's right, everybody wanted what was in her head. What makes her a loose cannon? That's just what they say. You talking about Laura? Piece of work, that woman. Surprised she hasn't run the whole operation into the ground. The only reason the board keeps her on deck is because of her father. A lot of people want her gone. Who's her father? Thomas St. Clair founded Clair Bionics. They made robots, just like your friend here. Hell, Million might be a St. Clair unit herself. Millions being very quiet about that. Anyhow, man's riches can be. Thomas St. Clair is a servant of the devil. There Gus goes with his bullshit. Not bullshit, it's truth. Alright, Gus. Alright, enough about her. That's enough. Before you go, I got one more thing. I'm hungry. 
be a real nice, just nice gesture with appreciation if you brought your informant something to eat. And circle back afterwards. I might have a little more information to share. Do you sell food? Yes, actually. Sucker born every day. Good for business, I guess. Should should have mentioned I don't much care for the fries here, but that's okay. I ain't complaining. Just would like me a sandwich is all, but forget all that. What's important right now is that you understand what I told you. I saw shield thugs leaving your mama's house with a box. What the box contained? No idea. But they was in there looking for something. No telling what. They got them headquarters deep inside the refinery in that old plantation house. Where the real action happens. If I had to guess where they was heading, that'd be it. Say, Keith, you getting all this? Every word. Keith's making himself a little news website. What's the name gonna be, Keith? I had a few ideas in mind. He just like Duck. He used to be a news junkie, too. Digging up dirt on all the bigwigs. That was before the cancer knocked him on his ass. Some people just want to know the truth. You've been by to see Duck, K? The man could use some visitors. Not yet. Better go see him. That old boy knows shit no one else does. Where is he? What you mean? Case must have took you to see Duck a thousand times. Just think about it for two seconds. Perhaps LeBlanc is right to suggest we should visit him at some point. Perhaps. Oh yes, quite. Why you talk like that? Did they make you in, in England or something? You sound like a, um, like a queen. Thank you. <laughs> Weird ass thing. Anyhow, figure I'd be seeing you two again. Good luck. Excuse me. Uh, more questions? Hurry it up then. We're looking for my brother. Why don't you ask Gus about that? I don't keep up with Blake no more. Too much trouble. We'll need help getting into the refinery. Getting in that refinery ain't easy. I know that much from experience. You should find one of them people that, like, they've been talking about on the news to help you out. Oil pirates, barricading Highway 1, diverting pipelines and all this. Them the only kind I ever see get through security. They were saying on TV one of them pirates been hiding in the Batcher Woods. It's all over the TV. He points to the television. Another pipeline explosion. I already... We're... We know that. You two knuckleheads managed to figure out what S.H.I.E.L.D. was looking for? Come and tell me. A good detective should know what's going on. Tell me more about Papa. What you want to know? How do you become fixated on my mom? Small town like this, your mama attracted attention. He was watching too many movies, cooked up some strange ideas, got his wires crossed. That's my guess. Sounds about right to me. Where is he now? Living in a ditch somewhere. That ain't nice, Gus. He left here a long time ago. He used to do odd jobs, roofing, fabrication, that kind of thing. No telling where he went. Probably looking for work. How well did you know him? I'd see him walking by every now and then. We'd exchange a few words. They say he threw a brick through the church window once upon a time. That had people buzzing. A lot of us knew who he was, but no one knew much about him. One of those kinds of people. That's enough. Where can I find Duck? I told you the first time. Just think about it for two seconds. I'm sure you've been there a thousand times, kid. Mind Palace. All right. Oh, boy. We got new stuff. So much new stuff. All right. Um, LeBlanc. Private investor, investigator Brett LeBlanc. He saw S.H.I.E.L.D. agents leaving your house with a box following your mom's death. Your brother never ended up at Floodgate Tavern. Erica said Blake was headed to Floodgate Tavern last night. Gus, the bartender, said Blake never showed up. Laura St. Clair is the regional executive of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oil. Her role is not secure. The board would like to replace her, but they fear the influence of her father. She is also interested in your mom, likely due to some aspect of your mom's research. Lucky, a fugitive oil pirate hiding in the Mississippi River woods. Thomas St. Clair is Laura St. Clair's father and an, the affluent father of Claire, uh, founder of Claire Bionics, a machine learning startup. If we're to attempt getting into the refinery to reclaim your mother's possessions, we'll need help. LeBlanc may know where to find it. Blanc said, suggests we visit Duck. It's good advice. Do you recall where Duck lives? There's a fugitive hiding along the Batur. Yes, we saw him mentioned on the news. Allegedly an oil pirate. What about him? Maybe he can help us get into S.H.I.E.L.D. That's, a re that's reasonable to assume. So, oh. An old man in Norco named Papa had delusions about your mom. He believed her to be a descendant of Jesus Christ by way of her Cajun ancestry. He once threw a brick through a church window. So, like... 
Your memory of him is scattered and vague. LeBlanc suggests you visit him, but where does he live? You try to recollect his face. Brief, generous smiles, but otherwise placid, expressionless. It's always happy to see him. His health. Took a turn before you left, a bit of lethargy, irregular breathing, sores on his legs. Your mom brought him food on days when he was unable to stand. His son, dead at 14, an explosion in the yard, natural gas leaking from a pipe. Something caused a spark. The pipeline. It crossed the property to Shield's chemical annex. There's only one neighbor neighborhood along that fence line, what's left of it anyhow. Small fragments of his home pass through the back of black ink of your mind. The perennial accumulation of dust. The damp curtains and pile of cans on the kitchen table in those refinery shadows of the little slab bungalow. Duck lives in Dimes. Dimes is the neighborhood along the fence line of Shields Chemical Annex. Duck lives there. Okay. This has taken another unusual turn. Erica told us that Blake was heading here yesterday evening, but the bartender says that Blake hasn't come by in weeks. Something may have happened on his way here. LeBlanc says that S.H.I.E.L.D. has stolen a box of your mother's possessions. We have nothing else to go on. We must retrieve the stolen items and hope they point us to your, towards your brother. Accessing S.H.I.E.L.D.'s headquarters won't be easy. Without assistance, perhaps impossible. I suggest we recruit help before attempting it ourselves. Okay. So we're gonna go to... Dimes, Disc at Home, Floodgate... Doesn't look great, does it? The house is partially boarded up. You assume it's an artifact of hurricane preparation that has since become a permanent fixture. Uh. Hello? Ah! You're just sitting there in the dark. Not the first ones to come through here, toppling over all my shit in the dark. Since the buyout, people think this neighborhood's all the way empty. Come around looking for copper. If you wouldn't do that kind of thing, Kay, not like your brother. How's it been, Doc? How's it been? About how it looked. Made such a mess with that head drive, just trying to keep myself out of trouble till it's my turn to go, so. You mentioned a buyout? You must have noticed coming in, the houses are all gone. People here have been fighting with S.H.I.E.L.D. all their lives. They got a little momentum on their side after the last explosion. Papers were making S.H.I.E.L.D. look bad. But hell, we were here first. S.H.I.E.L.D. moved in, we suffered. Gas leaks, noise, explosions. Can't grow my vegetables out in the yard. Just won't grow. Never cared to move, but I knocked doors for it anyhow. If S.H.I.E.L.D. had never dropped in on us, my little plot of land would be worth something. Money they were offering to buy us out was alright. Be worth a lot more had they never come. Number they put in front of me, I said piss on it. I could have sued after Reese died. Just didn't have the energy for it. Now I'm the last one left in dimes, so... Sorry about Reese. It's history. Most days I can't remember his face, if I'm honest. When you fill out the survey at the head drive clinic, they ask you to write down memories. Control points, they call them. I couldn't stand to write out his name. It was too painful. I skipped his memory. I regretted it at first, but I'm thankful for it now. Be a lot worse if that monster carried a piece of my boy inside it. Head drive? I unleashed it, the monster, super duck, caused itself that just to get to me. Just to piss me off. It's my fault, that company that made it for me, I should have known from the get-go. They only do their business at night. Found out later they don't even have a license. Your mother went to the same clinic for hers. I tried to warn her. The junk that was in my brain, he begins to laugh. Spreading around like a virus, it's even in the trees. Told your mother don't get messed up up in any of that. She tells me it's talking to her through the radio. I said turn off the radio. She never listens, stopped responding to me. Figure that monster's got money to burn. Catherine didn't want to leave her debt for you to deal with, so... So you kept up with my mom? Up until right near the end, Kay, she lived like she wasn't sick. She never quit. But I could see it was wearing on her. It took a toll on her body. started in her liver. They burned it out, though. They burned it out, thought maybe that was the end of it. Before you know it, they found a little in her lungs. She was still going all over, walking up and down airline like some kind of bag lady. Figure she thought it'd go away if she ignored it. That didn't work out for her. Once it came for me, it never did quit. Been getting sores, cramps every day. Can't keep nothing down. Tried to tell her that, said, Catherine, this is not the kind of thing you work you can work off. You think she listened? 
By the time they got to her brain, that was all there was to it. No more working, no more doing nothing. She'd already gotten fed up with me by that point. Never really made amends before they put her in that mausoleum with your daddy. Hurts my heart thinking about it, but what can you do? No hiding from God's will, so... <clears throat> More questions about my mom. This monster, my mom was working for it? He'd even think about that thing. It knows I'm here dying while it grows and grows. Big, disgusting, toxic birds sprouting from the ground all over the region with teeth and hands and all kinds of shit. Unbelievable. It turns my stomach. What? But you know what? Won't be the first to die. Hell no. I roped your mother into some lunacy. She wouldn't tell me the details. I couldn't get a single word out of her after a point. Did you attend her funeral? I planned to. Arranged for my godchild to pick me up and everything. The day of the service, I couldn't hardly walk. I heard from a couple people it was a beautiful one. For all the bridges she burned, there was plenty of people who had nice things to say. Even a few of her colleagues from the university showed up. The ones who got her sack. I know that had that that have, have chapped her ass. They buried her with fi that fake little ring she always wore around her neck. She'd say it reminded her who she was. Figure she probably wanted to give it to you. But you were gone. And Blake, well, he'd have pawned it to anyone fool enough to buy it, so... The ring she wore around her neck was fake? You don't know the story? Kind of funny, if it weren't so sad. Your granddaddy wanted to prove he was from royal stock, so he broke into a pawn shop up there on airline and stole the biggest ruby he could find. Went around telling everyone it was from the old world, said it traveled from France to Nova Scotia and down the Mississippi River. Well, that was a bunch of bullshit. He ended up in Angola for it, though. They never did find the ring. Catherine took it to an appraiser one time. It's cubic zirconia. Fake. The man spent months in jail for a fake piece of jewelry. After that, they started. After that, everyone started calling him King Pierre. They laughed him out of crevasse. My mom was fired from the university. Sure, you were young. Couldn't have been too long after Blue Pass. She lied up and down to get that job. Nothing special. Just a community college in the city. But that's Catherine. Never wanted to play it straight. Suppose Blake took after her in that respect. <sighs> we're trying to get into the refinery. Not a good idea, Kay. What for? They stole my mom's stuff. Well. That's interesting. The regional executive, she took a particular interest in your mother. Why? She wanted to know the things Catherine knew, I suppose. Your mother was out in the lake. She heard S.H.I.E.L.D. or somebody was building some kind of rig out there. She wanted to find out for herself. She didn't find what she was looking for, but she found something. It sounded to me like her medication was messing up her head. She insisted it was real, some kind of UFO. Said it followed her for nearly a mile. Anyhow, that CEO, they got... They, that CEO they got at S.H.I.E.L.D., she's about as far out of her mind as your mother was. She must have caught wind of all this. Catherine got to be careful in her old age. Paranoid, even. The important things she kept hidden. Whatever S.H.I.E.L.D. stole, it wasn't nothing important. But you want to get it back? Can you help us get in? I'm going to regret telling you this, but I've been sitting on it so long, been dying to tell somebody. I don't know how S.H.I.E.L.D. managed to do it, but they fucked up. They brought out this neighborhood. They bought out this neighborhood, and ever since they did, they put me behind the firewall. Got a computer terminal back there. Every time I boot it up, I get a view of the inside. Not like I know what the hell to do with it. Clicked around a bit, but just got myself lost. Can't hardly read the screen. Computer's back there in my little library. Have a look. Whatever you do, Kay, I'm asking you to be careful. Well, the library light was on. Strange ornamental box. You attempt to open the box. It's locked. Storage containers filled with paperwork and newspaper clippings. Sift through some of the clippings that fill the containers. Most relate to the cat catalytic cracking unit explosion of YX-10. Descriptions of the aftermath, the destruction, the displacement, the workers who died. Your father is listed among the names. A printout containing the letterhead of the law office in Metairi. Metairi? Metairi? I don't know how that, that... It. I feel like it should be Metairi. <laughs> Sits in the tray of the printer. Mr. Richard, after carefully studying the circumstances of the buyout, we recommend that you proceed with the relocation. S.H.I.E.L.D. is not legally obligated to provide you with an easement. You may find yourself trespassing on private property when leaving and returning to your home. 
The trophy sitting atop the bookshelf reads Junior Champion Reese Richards, St. Charles Parish, XY2B. He perused the titles on the bookshelf. U.S. Army Corps Anomalous Light Report. Report on the levitating spheres of light witnessed by multiple onlookers above Camp Memory and the Bonnet Care... Bonnet Carré spillway throughout the spring and summer of YX-1S, commissioned by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. After careful survey of the soil content and in the area near Camp Memory, our in inquiry has determined anaerobic conditions conducive to the formation of confined pockets of gas that, given exposure to sufficient heat, may ignite. These spontaneous incidents of combustions were likely mistaken for floating luminous spheres. Some claim that the pigman is a type of grunch who hides beneath the interstate bridges that cross Lake Port, Ch Port, Chartain. Ch Port Chartrain. Legend has it that if you bring the pigman a gift, he will return a gift to you in kind. Okay, we got that. A collection of bills, letters, and photographs are pinned to the board. Photographs are of various industrial and infrastructural landscapes that you recognize from around the region. The Geismar Aluminum Refinery, the Grain Elevators Down River, the Airport Control Tower. The head of a buck is mounted to the wall. Uh, excuse me? A computer console with a large trackpad and magnified display is old man. You pass your finger over the trackpad, waking the machine. Shield security terminal is displayed on the console. You sit before the shield terminal display. I'm gonna have to crack a code, huh? This is a map of shield sentinel drone security fleet. The entrance to the refinery is in zone A. If you want to gain access to the refinery, then it may be necessary to clear the sentinels from this zone. There are currently three drones patrolling zone A. Perhaps there's a way of relocating them. Seems there's a precaution in place to prevent any zone from being unsecured, but there may be a way around this. No zone can host more than three drones. When one zone contains no drones, then a maximum capacity neighbor will reallocate a drone to its unsecured neighbor. This means that when removing the last drone from zone A, we must be sure that none of its neighbors are at maximum capacity. Okay, so E has three. Wait, what? Can we move things over here? Oh, I see. this maybe F has two B okay C has two B E, D, A. Oh, wait. Don't worry, don't worry, I got it. Okay, so who... The drones have been cleared from the entrance area of the refinery. I suspect this will be helpful. How you doing, Kay? Oh. I'm gonna go... Oh. Let's 
Let's go back to home. Well, not home. I want to go... How did I get there before? From the... here? Yep. Hey there. Either of you see a dog, little black pit, green eyes. You see her, you send her this way. She answered a pots. You're the one they're looking for? Well, so what? Lucky make the news? They want trouble? Here I am. You see that dog, you send her this way. Alright, I know where the dog is. Uh... She reached down to pet the dog, she shows her teeth. What? Stocky pit bull with piercing green eyes watches the horizon. Wait, but how do I send her? This dog looks kind of hungry. What does, do dogs eat? Dog food, bruh. Dogs eat dog food. I see. purchase. You're no problem. You pour a heap of food onto the ground before the dog. She laps up the kibble and follows behind you as you step away. Duh, so cute. Alright, let's take you home. Pots. You brought back my pot liquor. She was having me worry. Pots now, she tough as they come, but Lucky th thought they had her. He reaches down and pets the dog behind her ears as she pants eagerly. He regards Millian. Say, robot, you look familiar. You a Claire Bionic student? No. All right, then. Just thought you might fill Lucky in on a little gossip. What gossip? Laura St. Clair, she one unusual character. Turning that refinery inside out on some wild goose chase. For what? Well, I was hoping the robot might tell me. But anyway, they call me Lucky. I stick around here. You need help, you find me. Help is just what we need. Is that right? We must infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. to retrieve some stolen property. We could use a hand. I done got past them fences more than I can count. That's a good time. Even got me a couple grenades in my bag. Lucky will come. You can count on Lucky. Now that there are so many of us, we'll need the truck to get around. Let's return to the house. I hope to finish repairs quickly. What you got, Kay? What do you know about S.H.I.E.L.D.? Lucky know all b about all there is to know. What about? How long has the facility been in Norco? S.H.I.E.L.D. came here early. All of this area was plantations. Weren't no money in that after slavery. Got all that oil right there in the Gulf. Oil companies come in, get the land cheap. River connects straight to it. Whole operation down here used to be run from their central headquarters. And then they split it up to get around some laws. Now you got this regional corporation with Laura St. Clair at the top. The man laughs. Bet they regret that idea. Tell me about Laura St. Clair. Laura St. Clair is the regional executive of S.H.I.E.L.D. Norco. Board of direction, Directors appointed her because of, her, of Thomas, her daddy. They was thinking they get her, they get her daddy. Look how that worked out. She done lost her mind and Thomas, he don't want nothing to do with her. What do you mean? Well, hell, it's all in the newspapers. She been sending survey teams out into the lake. Why is she sending them out there? Don't make no sense. That area of the lake, they ain't got no oil, no salt drones. Whatever she looking for, it ain't much to do with oil. Tell me about Thomas St. Clair. Thomas started the company that gets all the security contracts around here. Got his degree from LSU, moved out to California to make robots, man's a billionaire. Shield's board of directors appointed his daughter, thinking they could get some of his expertise at a discount. They don't, ain't known the drama back then, but they sure know it now. Thomas legally disowned his daughter. She tried stealing Claire Bionics out from under him. Some people say she even tried to kill him. I wonder if Million is, like, a spy, or has been reprogrammed to be a spy. That's enough about that. You from around here? Lucky come from Va Vacherie. Vacherie? Vacherie? <laughs> Sorry. Right up the river. But he done travel the land, walked to Knoxville, sailed to Mexico, talks in third person. 
Lucky done seen a good piece of this world. How long have you had Pot? Pot's been by Lucky's side two years. Found her pregnant beneath a car one day. Couldn't stand to see her like she was. Met a man with some land, wanted the babies. Thought we'd part ways eventually, but shoot, guess I got used to her being around. She returned all I did for her many times. <clears throat> How does it feel to be back in the house, Kay? Oh, like I'd rather be anywhere else. You weren't happy here before you left, I understand why. You and Catherine didn't get along. She never said it, but I know she regretted the way she spoke to you in those days. I don't mean <clears throat> I don't mean to dwell on such difficult topics. Alright, let's check out the mine palace or whatever. Blue is in a mausoleum. Blue wasn't buried. He was interred in a mausoleum. You visited a few times as a kid. Catherine brought flowers and prayed there. You sat restlessly, waiting for her to finish. Afterwards, she dragged you into the church that, fa that faced River Road to make you touch the holy water. She watched you motion the sign of the cross before fitching, fixing your shirt. She held your shoulder as the two of you left. Your mom versioned her consciousness at the same disreputable neural, ver neural versioning clinic as Duck. The device that hosts her consciousness is called a head drive. Your ga grandpa broke into a pawn shop and stole a jeweled ring to uphold the lie that he was descended from ro French royalty. Your mom later discovered that the ruby was made from synthetic material. She still wore the ring around her neck until she died. She was buried with it. Duck is an old friend of your mom's who lost his son when a shield pipeline cutting through their yard exploded. He versioned his consciousness at the same clinic as her. They fell out of touch before she died. He lives in dimes and is in poor health. Laura St. Clair is interested in your mom. Duck speculates that it's because of the object your mom observed in the lake. A fugitive oil pirate hiding in the Mississippi River Bature Woods. Oh. I'm gonna save it here. Uh, let me know if there's anything, um, preferably on Game Pass. <laughs> anything free that you guys want to see me play, and I will add it to my growing list. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. I mean, you don't have to subscribe. I'm not your mother. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Uh, see you. Bye.